Um, you, you said you don't regard yourself as a Shakespearean actor, but when I showed the guest list to um, an ex-teacher of mine yesterday, she said, oh my God, David Warner, he was the Hamlet of his generation. So, obviously, <laughs> you, you are fondly remember, but what I want to know is, having done that, what, what is a huge ambition you might have left? That's right. What's a huge ambition you have left to play a part any ambitions? No, I think I said earlier, I, I, if ambitions to play, but no, because they have to come to me and tell me I can do it. Do you remember I sort of said that earlier? But that thing about being, uh, thank you for whoever said about the Hamlet of the generation, I still maintain, I have played some Shakespearean parts, but then tell me, most, act, most actors of a certain generation have played Shakespeare quite a lot. It just so happened I was in one production that became famous. I'm an actor who's played Shakespeare. See, some people say, oh, there's David Warner, the villain actor. There's David Warner, the sci-fi actor. Uh, you know, sometimes people say David Warner, the classical actor. Because I've been around nearly for 50 years, and if you're lucky enough to pick up jobs, you could sort of, you're going to get into all those categories. It's not unusual for people who've been around for as long as me to have done a lot of Shakespeare. You know, or a lot of something, you know, because that's, we do it. And in the old days in the theatre, you know, you used to have different shows every two weeks with the same company in a repertory, you know. So you'd do a pantomime at Christmas, you'd do Chekhov, you'd do Ibsen, you'd do Shakespeare, you'd do Ben Travis Farce, you'd do all those different things. It really amazed me when somebody said about Dame Judi Dench playing a heavy or a villainous character in a film. Dame Judi Dench, you know, plays the villainess. You know. She's an actor and it's the job. It's our job to do that. You know, to be different. I, I hear what you're saying and I thank you for the compliment, but I just, like many of my contemporaries and many actors, done Shakespeare. But it just so happened that one, to some, not to everybody, but to that one became a quite well-known Hamlet. Uh, it wasn't planned that way. And certainly the newspaper reviewers, the morning after we had opened the play, you know, you read the were terrible. But somehow it became, it became something, you know, in, in the theatre. So I've done Shakespeare, but I don't see myself as a Shakespeare actor. You've done Shakespeare biggies though, haven't you? The, the, the Lears and the... Uh, yes, I played King Lear, then so was Julian Glover, and of course Sir Derek Jacobi, who couldn't be here today because he's earning money working. Uh, <laughs> Is, uh, is, is about to play King Lear uh, next year. Uh, yes, I mean, I have done some Shakespeare. Again, we, it, I don't really go into that, but I've done, a, yes, I've played Hamlet, and I've played King Lear, and I've played Falstaff. Now, Falstaff is a big fat man. Now, that's acting for you. <laughs> you know, that really, no, I played that at Stratford a couple of years ago. And so there are two, there are three great parts to, to play. If you, and I suppose it makes me a Shakespearean actor, doesn't it? I don't know. I mean, you're talking about having good, uh, a good laugh in films. One of the films that whenever I watch and see you in, it looks as if you had a ball, especially the way you delivered the lines in The Time Bandits when you play Evil Genius. Well, you know, actually, uh, I love Terry Gilliam. is a wonderful director. And if ever you used a word, uh, a, a director's vision, which is a word I hate when they're talking about people. Who do. That, I mean, because it's of extraordinary pictures that he's, he, and ideas that come out of the screen. Terry Gilliam is, he's a wonderful man to work with. Time Bandits was not, it was not not fun to work on, but it was real work. I, my costume in Time Bandits, if anybody saw it, you know, it was this heavy costume. And I had long fingernails and things like this all the, to, to look extraordinary. And you, you had the seven little guys. So, you know, what you, what's a politically correct term? I, do, I, I don't know. Really seven dwarfs. <laughs> seven dwarfs, yes. Anyway, it's so, uh, <laughs> It's the only time, now I think to you that I, uh, and this doesn't worry me and it's not an issue with me, but I, I've been acting a long time, but I don't win acting awards. I, I, it's the kind of, I, I, no, don't, you don't, don't say, it's not that, because I, I don't play the kind of parts, but time bandits. Is the one film I would like to have won an award for because I could have got up there and, I said, and I'd like to thank all the little people. <laughs> that, would have been, that would have been. I think that would have been ace. Uh, no, but I mean, no, seriously. The, to, 
it, it was very seriously it, it was fun because because the atmosphere was really one of enthusiasm but it was really hard work for example our, our seven friends well, I, whether it was seven I, I don't know but they I didn't realize I couldn't swim and Terry put them in water <laughs> well, you're laughing but for, they weren't no, it's, <laughs> No, but, uh, uh, but, but, uh, no, but uh, it was really hard physical work. But it certainly wasn't unpleasant, but there wasn't a lot of time for laughing because we really had to get, you know, we had to get the stuff. Um, and the great Ralph Richardson uh, was also in that with you? Well, with me, well, the great, yes. Well, I mean, we, yes, you know, when we did this scene, we weren't actually in the studio at the same time. Uh, it's one of those things where he came in with a cup of tea, I believe. Again, I haven't seen it for a long time. And uh, yes, Sir Ralph Richardson. Yeah. Um, the wonderful, wonderful... I didn't know him. That's the only time I met him. Uh, he said last night that they didn't give him a dressing room. Oh, that's right, yes. Uh, yes, that's right. For some reason, because it was only in for a day, they hadn't got him a dressing room, I couldn't. So I offered him my dressing room, because I was working on it for months. And he said, no, no, it's fine, dear, but I'll just stand here in the corridor. <laughs> um, now, um, another um, wonderful actor you've worked with in Star Trek was Christopher Plummer in Star Trek The Undiscovered Country. Um, was that a happy experience for you, playing Chancellor Gorkon? Well, I mean, uh, it wasn't an unhappy experience. Again, you know, you never take for granted the fact you're offered a job. And, you know, and usually give an actor a job and he starts complaining. That's, that really does happen a lot. You know, oh God, this job, I've got to get, I've got to get up. You know, you're, you're, you're out of work for two years. You get, you know, you go to auditions and get rejected. You get, and then you get the job. And you turn up and you say, oh God, it's four o'clock in the morning. And all I've got is a bacon sandwich. You know, and they, and it's true. You know, so what was it like working with Christopher Plummer is a big star, and he's got a, a good ego. I had met him, no, I mean, I'd met him socially a couple of times, uh, and he was just a professional, and really not a, uh, no, no stories really to, to tell about that. He was, it was very, very, it was great, though, for those of you who knew Time After Time, Star Trek VI, which we're talking about, was directed by Nicholas Meyer, who directed Time After Time. And, and I had just been in, playing a human in Star Trek V, and evidently Nick said later, he didn't know I was in Star Trek V, because, and also I must have slipped through, but how do you play two different species? In two, you know, in two Star Trek, you play the same character coming and going, and I don't know how I slipped through in, into five and six. It was a mistake. It was, a, it was an administrative mistake that I was in five and six. One as a human being, and as the other as, as a whatever. What was I? A, 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 a Klingon. I was a Klingon. And um, Shatner directed five. <laughs> well, well, it's not. <laughs> Oh, we are not. Well, no, he was in his he was in his contract because if Nimoy directed one, Shatner had to direct one. It was one of that they call these equal uh, favored nations contract between the pair of them. Whatever, whatever Nimoy had, Shatner had to have, or whatever Shatner had to have, Nimoy had to have. But it so, so happens that Nimoy had talent <laughs> as a director because I think Shatner actually is an extraordinary presence, and I mean that. I mean I have no problems with him at all. In what and he's and he's exploiting what he is, you know. Now as he grows older and he does everything, and I admire that very much. Yeah, he directed it. <laughs> but you said your part was heavily cut from the final yes, version. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, again, yes. I mean, so in the end, if you see it, I have a scene in this bar, this futuristic bar, and then I'm standing on the Enterprise, you know. That's why, actually, I'd love to be in the TARDIS, even walk through. Because, you know, if you're on, this, on, on, the, on, the, on the Enterprise thing, you know, not everybody gets to do that. And also, I forgot, I was beamed up and beamed down in Star Trek VI. Yeah. They beamed me up, so I've done the beaming and I've been in the end of life. I've done all that, but I've not done the TARDIS. Even just walking through the cleaners. <laughs> 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 